Hello, hello, and welcome to another Wednesday live stream. I hope you all are having a wonderful evening and week and April so far. Um, I'm your host, Miranda. With me, I've got my painter, the painter, Flo. Yellow. And uh, over on the sidelines, we've got Mr. Disembodied Voice. Hello there. Uh, and lots to talk about today. Um, we came back from Adepticon. I guess I had a birthday. Uh, I got sick. We took the train. All kinds of fun things since we streamed like a month ago and uh, yeah lots of travel which has been like you know it's it is a privilege to be able to do but it is also super exhausting I don't mind saying so start by saying hello to everybody in the chat I'll show off like some of the stuff that we got from like the um, I guess the swag bags if you bought if you were one of the 2,000 people to buy that from Adepticon and some of the stuff we bought, and then some stuff that Paul sent me for my birthday, because I want to show that off, because he's wonderful. And always, as always, thank you, Paul, for being my moderator. We appreciate you, and I don't know what I'd do without you. So, um, yeah. Also, the sister battle thing probably doesn't need to go there. Conflict. No, it doesn't need to be here. <laughs> get that out of here. Who knows? Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get that at Adepticon. Alas, no. That is... Honestly, that's not even going to get used, because it has to be remade, even though it's nice. Yeah, yeah. probably it has to get remade. <sighs> Sister Battle costume. Soon. <sighs> anyway, uh, so, first, chat, uh, first comment here. Sounds great. We have a laugh track, apparently. <laughs> It'll be just totally off timing, of course, so. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Mandragora says, hey there, Miranda, been looking forward to this week's chat. I have an image for you, I have to say, or you have to see, waiting for you on your Facebook update. So while I was waiting for all these updates and everything to go through, I saw that Facebook post about your turned Night Titan, and that is a really cool story. I'll let you read it afterward. It's a whole... Is that your... I assume that's your own story about this night that it's like worked with the Imperium, but the, um, the Lord that it was sworn fealty to was corrupt and bad, and when the Inquisition got him, the pilot and the subsequent pilots of the Titan um, swore against the Emperor, and specifically against, like, what was it, the Emperor's daughters, which then became the Sisters of Battle. Anyway, it's no. a cool story. It's so that would be exactly counter to the Night Titan I'm building. Exactly. Oh, interesting. So we've got... We've got more, we've got a nemesis already. Uh -oh. You've got a nemesis already. <laughs> so yes, thank you so much for sharing that. So if you're on my Facebook page, on the Wargamer Girl Facebook page, where I post about the live stream happening, um, if you've got models you want to show off or any stories you want to tell, you, um, you can just post and reply to that comment for this week's uh, live stream, which is what Mandragora did. So you can see a picture of his Titan and, and the story. It's quite uh, nifty. Oh, all right. Let's see. And yeah, sorry I was running late. Like, mm, internet. How many, how many updates did you install? I don't know. Windows itself needed at least five, and then OBS needed one. Steam in the background. Not that I asked it to, but it had to update and jumped in front of things. And 
the whole thing. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, depth is ridiculous. You'll get it, honey. Thanks. We did get there. JP Got Rockets, did you know that 100% of Adepticon attendees attended Adepticon? I'm not entirely, I don't know, if you bought a badge, do you count as an attendee? I feel like the laugh track landed on that one. Yeah. So there's a meeting happening in the uh, office next to us, and we can hear them because they're being quite rowdy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But mostly it's jovial, so it just sounds like a 90s sitcom laugh track for today's show. Exactly, for just every bad joke. It's just... Mm. Um, JP Got Rockets <laughs> asks a very important question. What happened to the other 504 Paul Knoxes? Dare I ask? Hey, Rebek, welcome to the chat. Um, Mr. Kyle, welcome. Appreciate you joining. Mm. Yeah, when Paul and I play, we just. Discord's been very convenient. That's how I stream with my brothers and everything, too, because it's got a way better integration for streaming video games. OBS is more of like a general broadcasting software that interfaces with YouTube and is free, which is nice. <laughs> Lord knows I have enough subscriptions I pay for. Mandragora, which sisters order are, Ma are Miranda Sororitas? Well, they'd be the disembodied voices Sororitas. Yeah, technically I'm the, the sister player, uh, and I don't know yet. Um, he doesn't know. I've, I've been enjoying the idea of just having multiple <laughs> like orders on the battlefield. <laughs> Order of the fence sitters. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I, always I like the golden light. They actually seem pretty cool, but <coughs> I feel like they look a lot like, uh, um, what do you call them? The Sisters, Sisters of, of Silence. silence. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, but even just our martyred lady is kind of a default, it seems. Like, that's kind of what well, we're doing. Well, that's the, the armor. Cel Celestine one, I think. Yeah. That was our martyred lady. Well, she is the martyred lady. Um, well, sort of. Um, but, like, uh, uh, the one that we're building, like, the costume for you is uh, Order of Our Martyred Lady. Yeah. Well, it's just it's got the iconic look, so... JP Got Rockets, who I got to meet at Adepticon. Very yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, it was fun. A uh, cat is sleeping, purring, and trying to knit me with his eyes closed. Wow. Before you ask, he does in fact qualify as orange. Wow. Uh, so who else made it to Adepticon? So Thomas, I got to meet Thomas Grable as well. Super fun, getting to hang out and see his gorgeous gorgeous war machine board that he used to represent at Armies on Parade. It's like the, I think there was technically two. I only saw the one um, war machine board. Well, there was the, did he also do the, um, oh, what's it called? The, the little game show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> game that they play for War Machine. Uh, Riot Quest? Yeah, Riot you did the Quest. yeah, yeah, you did the Riot, I, yeah, too, did the Riot right? Quest board, right? Um, Thomas. And then of course you won you won some prizes for your beautifully painted models as well. So oh, yeah. I think he had a good Adepticon. I'm I'm assuming you did. I'm sure you can you can share with the with the family here <laughs> and let us know what you thought, but it seems like it was a good time. Uh, JP Got Rockets. The hotel food was expensive, but dang it was good. The breakfast buffet was well worth it. Uh, oh, the breakfast, we actually had that at the, um, what was it, the Public House, I think is the name of the restaurant inside the oh, Renaissance. Oh, yeah, we did. So we had that the last morning. We had the buffet. Mm -hmm. Breakfast buffet was good. You liked the French toast, I think. French toast was good. I'm just happy they had sliced cantaloupe. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, cantaloupe for breakfast. It's a nice high-end kind of food. Yeah, the for convention food, it wasn't the most expensive, I don't think. It's kind of mid-rate, like, I'm trying to remember, because I think LVO's food might have been a little bit cheaper, but the quality was a bit different. And then, like, the stuff at... Nova was more, I Nova think. was more, because you're in D.C. and just everything's more. Yeah. Um, but it was also a lot of food, and they did more combos. Where here, I think it was more a la carte. Yeah, definitely. And so the individual items weren't as much, but it would add up if you got, like, tots or fries or something with your sandwich or burger or whatever. Because we did, what, the chicken strips one of the nights and stuff? You know, they just have food out in the hall, which is helpful for... So any convention, if they have it at a hotel, the hotel 
needs you, requires your event to use their own kitchen and food and all that, and the convention has to meet a certain, certain food and beverage minimum. And so I think, I can't remember how much say the convention has and how much is charged for the food items, but basically the, the um, convention needs to generate so much food and beverage revenue or there's a big bill to the convention afterward. And so it's always a big toss up on like how you price that and where you put the food because it's always gonna be the most convenient because it's right there. And gosh, if you're a part of the tournament scene, I imagine you're just like, oh, go get me some chicken wings. Come back. <laughs> Little grot runners. <laughs> yeah, right? I didn't see too much of that. But there were also people delivering. I know there are a lot of pizzas getting delivered to Renaissance. Oh, we got to try out Lou Manatis. Manatis. To eat at the Illuminati's restaurant. The Illuminati's restaurant, yes. Uh, is anyone else having a problem with the stream? It keeps pausing on my end. Try refreshing your screen because it's showing my connection is pretty solid. So I think it's okay. I think it might be a, a for once, not my end. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, so yeah, can, I don't know. If you've never been to any of the conventions, just always keep in mind like the food is is always going to be probably more than you want to spend, but at the same time, you're paying for sort of that convenience. And if you don't pay for it, the, hotel, the convention does. Thomas Grable, hello, ladies and disembodied boys. <laughs> hello. Uh, JP got rockets. I really didn't get much in the way of minis. Uh, I was mostly stocking up on supplies. Picked up Tommy Soul and Eric Swenson's books uh, and the Game Envy Lights as well as brushes and paints. Well, you picked up some brushes, didn't you? I picked up a brush, and then we were given a bunch of brushes. We were given a bunch of brushes, because we, <laughs> we bought a fair bit of stuff from Games and Gears. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I tend to paint with the Artist Opus brushes, and um, when you buy the sets, if you get the newer set that has like the huge range of them, you're good, but if you get the smaller sets that they originally have, it only goes up to a size two, which is not as good for like base coating things. So I was at Artist Opus, and the one brush I was looking for they didn't have, so they actually went and dug through all their boxes and found me it. So uh, it was I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I know they seemed really nice. Um, and then yeah, the Games and Gears booth gave us a boatload of brushes, <laughs> which. Well, wait, is that where we got the old mat? That's where we got the hobby mat, yes. Yeah, those are cool. Those are really nice. They had a like a set of things with them, but I was like, ah, I just need the mats. <laughs> Reva Cronenberg, belated birthday wishes, Miranda, 21 plus tax. Thank you. Oh, Miranda Tron. Miranda Tron, yes, I'm sorry. Miranda Tron, that's a cool name. Uh, Jack Smithy, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I don't know if it's cooler than, there's some YouTube girl out there named the Miranda Lorian. Which is pretty cool. Yes, and better than Mandalorian, it's the Moran DeLorean. Like, like Back to the Future? Yes, much cooler. <laughs> Somewhat cooler. It hasn't been ruined yet. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jacob's Bet, first time here live. Welcome, appreciate you joining. So, we're chatting about Adapticon and the goings on. Um, so, I guess we should maybe start a little bit from the beginning. We took the train out there, which was the first time ever taking Amtrak. So the four of us climbed on to a 26 hour journey from Albuquerque Station via the Southwest Chief into Union Station in downtown Chicago, which we wish we had stopped in Naperville instead, but didn't oh, that's know right. better. <laughs> so lesson learned in the future. There is another town that's closer to Schaumburg. <clears throat> and it's not downtown Chicago. It's not downtown, not downtown Chicago. And as far as we know, it's not under construction. Right. So yeah. Union Station was under construction. The roads around it were under construction. Like getting an Uber that from there was really expensive. It was a whole thing. It was just a whole, it was a whole lot of stuff. <coughs> the upside to taking the train is you can kind of carry a lot more stuff than you can carry on a plane. Oh, like twice as much. Easily. And they don't seem to like care. They're just like, well, go on. Like they don't make, they have like rules about like, oh, well, you check a bag and you can do this and that, but they don't make you do anything. So you're just gone and as much as you can carry, basically. Uh, the downside is you have to carry all of that afterward when you don't have a car. You're that like, was a lot. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of stuff. We were all packed. Um, 
we were all loaded down for sure. <clears throat> I almost uh, borrowed a shopping cart from a homeless guy just so we could wheel it all around. <laughs> borrowed? <laughs> yes. So, so yeah. Um, and then it was like an hour, I think, to get from downtown Chicago to Schaumburg because of traffic and, you know, whatever construction. Because we got there around... <laughs> 3.30. Three, yeah, but yeah. we probably didn't head out until closer to 4. It was almost a solid hour. Yeah. And there were four of us, but we had luggage, and so we are like, hey, we need a car that'll seat six. <laughs> and so they're like, okay. Here's a Prius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the first one was a Prius. And it's like, what the hell? No. And so then it was like some weird car where it'll seat, what is it? It'll seat like four or five or something, but you have to, like, set up seats that would take place of the luggage. And oh, in like, the third row, whatever. It worked. Yeah, it barely worked. We got there. It was a whole thing. So I, I learned about Uber XL. For about 45 minutes getting to Schaumburg. It was a journey. And we couldn't stay. Whenever we booked, we didn't get to be in the Renaissance, so we were a couple miles away, so we had to Uber back and forth during the day, which, you know, if you're ever going to do Adepticon, one of the best reasons and best arguments to be in the hotel, if at all possible, is just so you don't have to carry that crap around. You can just check it up into the room. Or if you've got a car, I guess you can also check it in the car for the day or in the trunk or whatever, so that you're just not just carrying stuff around from the vendor hall or whatever until you get back to your own hotel. So definitely a, a lot of traipsing around. I think we all hit 10,000 steps easily each of the days. <laughs> it's mm. good times, it's good times. And so then we, so we arrived Wednesday, which was the first night of the convention. We missed the um, Warhammer uh, reveal because I think that was really full up. There's a queue to go to that. Uh, there's a queue for a lot of stuff. So this was the most attendees so far. It was 8,000 people in attendance according to Adepticon's numbers. Which is a lot. And so the result is a lot of places have lines. Like the line for the Golden Demon lasted all weekend. I don't think. Oh, yeah. yeah that was I don't think it was ever short. Yeah, there were like, a couple of times earlier on where it wasn't too long. Mm -hmm. But most of the entries don't go in until the last day. Oh. And so you're missing half the entries if you go early. Oh, and it's still a line. Yeah. No, so we didn't even see the golden I, you did i think yes we did, we, did, do the, we did do the golden demon we did do the the creator people meet up yeah thing. we got to go to the creator meetup which was also on wednesday and that was really really cool i got to um i got to meet the girl who uh adepticon accidentally sent me her badge <laughs> and they were like hey can you uh forward this on and i'm like yeah no problem so we got to meet her and i was like yeah that's really cool that was a lot discombobulated from the day, so I'm sure it came off super hey, I met awkward. my favorite creator person you there. You did. Who's which, that? Which, man, I feel like we should have a picture of his YouTube channel or something, but it's Bill Makes Stuff. Yes. If so anyone watches that guy, he's awesome. If you haven't seen it, a very polite, diminutive British gentleman gave me a sticker, which now sits on my laptop that I forgot to bring today. And I kicked myself because I was like, dang it, I didn't bring any damn stickers. I have stickers. I have my stickers for my channel. I have magnets. Well, it seemed like Did it was sure? a thing that everyone was started doing in the last year or two. Yeah, and it's like it's their like, calling oh, man, card. No one told us. So I'm going to just have to send him a care package or something. I'll be like, I'm sorry. Here, I have some stickers. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> I don't know why look I at Bill Make Stuff. He's got cool. Bill Make Stuff is fun. Are, are you, is anyone in the chat familiar with him? Because he's great. JP knows him. JP does. Bill's hilarious. Sorry I missed him. Oh, yeah, he was walking around all convention. In fact, he has a fun video out now of, like, should you go to Adepticon? He's like, if you want to. Like, yep. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, the creator meetup was really cool. So a lot of people I knew I got to see there. You know, I got to catch up with Phil from Glacial Geek, and I saw Adam from Tabletop Minions. We saw Sam Lenz, and I got to meet Eric from Eric's Hobby. Eric's Hobby Hangout? Eric's Hobby, what is the? Uh, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Yeah. So he's a really, really good painter. Uh, and he was at the... Um, what a builder. And a builder, that's right. Makes all kinds right. of cool stuff. And he's at the, he was at the army painter booth this weekend, or that weekend. Uh, or at least that's where I ended up seeing him a fair bit. Um, and yeah, just like a ton of really cool artists. Of course, people participating in the Golden Demon. Um, 
tons of people participating in the tournaments, um, the team tournament. You know, they had their armies on parade. I think that it felt like the tournament hall for 40K was slightly smaller than the last time we were there. But since yeah. I haven't been there since 2019 and I don't remember <laughs> what the I, layout it was. It just feels like it was bigger in the past, but I, I have zero things to really base that on other than yeah, just it seems like it. Yeah, because obviously the convention itself took up way more space. In fact, it spilled into two hotels. Um, the convention contracted with a shuttle service to escort people back and forth between the Renaissance and the Hyatt Regency. So that was kind of across the freeway. So not super close, like not really walking distance, but close-ish within 10 minutes. Um, and that's where they put um, the Song of Ice and Fire stuff. They had like- Bolt action. Yeah, they had bolt action and Armada. all- Right, um, Blood Red Skies. They had a lot of the historical stuff. They had, um, yeah, Star Wars Armada was there. Oh man, they had some nice like lights and ground effects on all their big ships. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> the Armada Wars. room was fun. And they were all huge rooms, like super filled up with tons of game space. So you could tell that, I mean, I don't, you know, when you're dealing with logistics, I mean, a big part of it is like how many people signed up, how much space do you need, right? And yeah. that was that was really interesting to see how many people were playing Armada. And yeah, they did some really cool stuff. I loved seeing the LEDs. I got some photos, but I ran out of time to upload all the photos. So I only have like nine of them that I got on here before I really needed to start the live stream. So yeah. yeah the idea was to be uploading them, you know, in the hour or two before we had to start, but instead we had to do updates. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the creator meetup Monday one was really cool. Let me catch up on a little bit of the chat. Shadow Cat. Steam always says me first. I know, right? Also, I have a new friend who wants to play me at War Machine at last. Hey, cool. Got to, oh, What well. do they play? What do they play? Yeah, what, what do, does your friend play? What does your friend or play, Or what does your friend want to play, I suppose? Yes, we must find out. Mm. Coolness. Have fun teaching your friends, says Thomas. Uh, three foot good. Hi, Miranda and Flo, and I forgot to ask the name of the gentleman you're with, sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. Disembodied voice, what's your name? Uh, oh, uh, Thomas and I th probably DJ was with us, too. Oh, yeah, sorry, Thomas, I think DJ. Gentlemen, I think, right? Not gentleman. Uh, I think at the time, gentleman. DJ oh, was yeah. being a loner. He was not. He didn't come up and meet everybody. Hmm. I don't know. We were a group a lot of the time, then we'd separate off, right? Aaron was with off. us sometimes, too. So. Aaron from Cool Guys Nation was with us sometimes. Saw Dave sometimes. Like, wow, well, yeah. Just, you know, the big thing is you sort of just bounce off. Like, conventions are crazy because on the one hand, you're like, oh, I'm going to stay here and do this thing. But at a moment's notice, someone might be like, hey, want to go get some food? Or, hey, want to go check this thing out? Or, hey, want to come join my Malifaux RPG? And then you get... <laughs> you get sucked away and then you're gone for a while, <clears throat> which happened a lot. Oh my gosh, time flies by at a convention. Like half an hour is nothing. Uh, Thomas, yes, one silver for my Deepborn Dire Troll and gold for my Admiral Boom Howler. No prize for Adepticon Armies on Parade, but I was up against 14 foot tall displays. But lots of compliments. You did such a wonderful job on that board. I mean, you Well, that's technically a lot of the. Armies on Parade are done by four people. Well, that's true, instead of just one. But I do like that they let anybody participate in the Armies on Parade in order to parade. Oh. <laughs> uh, I got to do some cosplay. Ooh. So uh, we got to have this little bad boy on, uh, work on my muzzle control and that face. So what's that off. called? What kind of gun is that? This would be the Hot Shot Volley Gun, which came together, what? A few um, hours before, before we had to be on the train? Yeah, <laughs> basically. And this is a print from the <coughs> Cult 3D website, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's where I got it from. <coughs> and uh, yeah, it's not even completely together, but it's pretty substantial for just a filament 3D print. And it's got <coughs> some cool functionality, like the ability to remove the mag clip. Uh, and the trigger also has a spring in there to give it some resistance. So it was super fun. We got to, uh, I got to run around as my uh, Cadian, and I don't have, I have video of it, but I don't have it to share yet with you guys, but I was helping with the uh, narrative a little bit with um, 
Katie and Ser Sergeant Cadian Steele. <coughs> Hadian Sergeant Steele, who is running the narrative, um, like there was a small narrative of 40K happening at Adepticon that was really cool. Um, yes, so yes, I have a very good video of it. I thought I'd upload. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, please do. Chuck of Rhubarb, hello! Adeptus Ridiculous, WGG, need to know, need to know what you've experienced over there in the land of dreams. Speaking of which, I played some AOS. 30 and 40k uh, tied and tabled at the Warhammer shops. Awesome. Congratulations. Mm. Did you hear mm -hmm. that a new AOS is coming out? That was part of the big Warhammer reveal. Was new AOS, summer 2024. So what does that mean? How different is it going to be? I don't know. But, I mean, on the one hand, I see that and I'm like, oh, maybe this is a good time to jump in and explore Age of Sigmar. <laughs> I really like those models. And then the other part of me is like, Miranda, you barely play 40K, and that's like what you're trying to do. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> Maybe I can only afford so many hobbies that want all of your time. So we'll see. But if you're excited about AOS, let me know, because I don't know. The models, you know, I, the endless spells were always the part that really like <clears throat> captured my imagination. Are cool. That always made me so happy. I was like, man, I want to play this. Sounds fun as hell. JP Got Rockets, I didn't go see the armies on parade. I was running games. Fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. It felt a little small this year. I don't know why. Because there were a lot of entries still. Like, it largely filled the hall, and it was on both sides of the hall this time. So I got some photos I'll share um, of the armies on parade. But yeah, I mean, some pretty massive structures that people brought in, um, including, oh my gosh, some really pretty AOS, like old world stuff too. Yeah, and that's when I went and did uh, Golden Demon is when you guys were doing the Armies on Parade at first. That's right, because I think we were going <coughs> to go to the Golden Demon, but the Armies on Parade has a much more limited time frame that's yeah. open for, so we're like, eh, let's go check that I out I mean, first. I still got to do Armies on Parade, it just it worked out that while we were up there, most of the people left to go do Armies on Parade, so it was less <laughs> of a line. You're like, it's open. Go, go, go. <laughs> go look Basically. at the things. JP got rockets. Games and Gears always hooks me up when I pick up stuff. He's loaded me up with goodies. Sweet. We bought a bunch of stuff from uh, Games and Gears before we left on the last day, which is the other thing. If you go to Adepticon, the, one of the biggest days for vendors is actually Thursday because that's when they have all their stock in, and anybody who's going to the convention kind of has some idea that they want to do some shopping or they want to catch a specific mm -hmm. item, mm -hmm. like maybe some artist opus brushes or some of the stuff from Monument, anything that they're worried is going to sell out. So Thursday ends up being a huge, huge shopping day, whereas Friday and Saturday is when you get more of the walk-in traffic to Adepticon. And so those are other people shopping, but not necessarily people who are there for the whole convention. And so by the time you get there on Saturday, like a lot of vendors sold out of stuff, like a surprising amount of people, you know, either had to go get more stock or... Uh, that really nice British man we met um, on the second floor right by Golden Demon. He's like, I sold out of everything. I'm just hanging out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was doing all the, uh, what were they, like the, the old, old school, school 90s Titans. Mm -hmm. And he had done a bunch of kind of night Titans in the style of like all the sketches from Epic. Yeah, and that's so right. They were kind of fun. He had some really cool stuff. So but he, he sold them. As kits that he made, and I guess he cast in resin, but he also painted them okay. in the 90s style. Yes, yes, so, so they have that kind of... things that he had made. That very colorful miniature yeah. look that, um, that we have. Mm. Let's see, Adeptica, Adeptus Ridiculous, painting my existing 40K, uh, SW 30K, Horus, AOS Night Haunts, coincidentally one with the stuff I had, uh, and tabled a few too. Good job, man. Jacob, uh, I go through so many brushes painting terrain and dry brushing. Well, um, <clears> I'm trying to use the crappy stuff for. Yeah, well, for dry brushing, right? I thought makeup oh. brushes were kind of a popular thing. Makeup brushes, brushes are good for dry good. brushing, but just using like generic paint brushes and stuff for terrain is usually the better way to go. You don't want to use oh, yeah. fancy things because it will it will tear it up because a lot of those terrain pieces have so many dips and divots in them that will just tear up the brushes. Mm. Oh, yeah. So like, terrain you get this, is, you go to Hobby your... Lobby, <laughs> and you buy brushes when the, when when the 50 paintbrush section is 50% off. Heck, yeah. And you just buy, like, the, mm. 
what is it, classroom artist packs and yep. stuff, you know? Yep. Like, That's exactly you it. You just get that stuff, and, and, and then you don't care what happens to them. Three foot good. Used to live in Naperville. Well, I wish we stopped there, but we didn't. And then we had to go back through Union Station, which actually wasn't bad. But let's see. Jack Smithy, I've never been to Adepticon. Maybe one day. I mean, it's a great bucket list item. Uh, it's, it's a big convention in that you have 8,000 people, but it's not that big a convention in the scheme of things when you compare it to something like Gen Con with 70,000 people or PAX or San Diego Comic Con. Or even when we went to BlizzCon. Oh, BlizzCon. Yeah, when the year <laughs> we went, I think, was 20,000. Yeah, it's relatively small. <laughs> so it's... It is a big convention. It's the biggest tabletop gaming convention you can go to, and it has an amazing selection of vendors. Um, it's maybe a bit overwhelming if, depending on what you want to do, but there's so many things that people are doing. I don't necessarily think it feels too crowded, except for the lines for food sometimes, and the Golden Demon line was wild. <laughs> I was not going to get in that line. God, I feel like the Golden <laughs> Demon line was probably the... That's got to be the biggest line... It's the biggest one I saw, anyway. Yeah, probably. Yeah, except for that first night when they were all trying to line up to get into places um, Wednesday night. Like the vendors? Um, or well, some, yeah. Some so of them people were, were trying to, oh, that's Yeah, right. people were trying to get, yeah, their badges. So we... Yeah, that's fair. One of the nice things Adepticon did is if, if you paid extra, you could um, have the, your badges just mailed to you. So you could just show up and start doing your stuff. And then you can just pick up your swag bag or whatever else you ordered any time during the weekend, which is what we opted to do. Because Wednesday night, yeah, there was a really long queue for people trying to get organized for registration. And we were like, we're just not going to deal with that. We don't have to. We're like, we are just going to wander off. Bye. So I appreciate that. Plunder Den, it was really nice to see that the blood and Nothing. There we go. Audio again. Okay. Sorry for the audio dip out if, uh, if that happened. Sorry, sorry. I mean, the moment I saw Blood and Plunder, I couldn't help but think of the Plunder Den. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's like, they were right next to the War Machine table. They were right next to the War Machine table, which was fun. And of course, All the War Machine people were happy and excited, commenting about them, because they're like, man, all those pirate guys... <laughs> <laughs> must be having a blast. They did seem like they were having a really good time. Because everybody's dressed up like pirates. Yeah, there was a really decent amount of cosplay we saw at Adepticon also. Uh, we saw some Space Marines. We saw a couple Krieg. saw some Admech. Uh, we saw a couple Cadians running around. <laughs> <laughs> um, orcs. Or, yeah, there was at least one orc. Yeah, I saw the orc. Yeah, but then people were dressed up for other IPs as well. There was so we a saw Stormcast Eternal. Yeah, yeah, and she was super cool. Hers was cool, but then she was I'm trying to remember the name of that character. I know, I literally forget the name every time. I have a I actually have a picture so of her. So she's the Imperium like commander <clears throat> person who has the little red <clears throat> bloody red handprint yeah. on her white uniform. I'm cool. sure you guys, at least some of you, know instantly who that who that character is. Oh, cool. went up for a second. I know, I, I don't know how this works. I would like it to not there you go. move. Oh, stop. There's no pause button. Why is there no pause button? Anyway, yes, that character. <coughs> um, so she was really cool, and she's a like a professional cosplayer, so you met her, and she's like, here, have a ribbon, because you met me, kind of thing. So that was really fun. Um, we got to see some fun Titan. Oh, yeah, so this was some of the Titan stuff happening. Uh, part of the narrative event. So um, Shay, who was running the narrative event, was it was a big Imperium versus everyone else, I think, and they were fighting over this planet. And as far as I can tell, all of the players opted to just destroy the planet. Well, the, well, no, it started, <laughs> yeah. and as soon as they started losing ground, they're like, "We can't do this. Destroy the planet. <laughs> destroy the planet." Here's some stuff from Armies on Parade. I mean, it's a little <laughs> bit overwhelming. You have to kind of really take your time and look at it. But there's like there's just a lot going on. And I think this was, is this 40K? I think so. 
Uh, this one was a really cool little coliseum that someone had built out. Oh, I miss that. Yeah. Here's from Wait, here's the... a close up from Thomas's board. Um, I've got a, another picture in here for also. Uh, this one was super cool. I just loved the whole factory setup. <laughs> yeah. Looks amazing. Beautiful light effects. Ah, oh, such good stuff. And this was like one of those like ten foot tall ones. And it if you walk all around it, it tells a whole story. And they like three D printed, I think, all of the models inside of it. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think any of the models are were original were, or something like uh -uh. that. I think they were saying like, yeah, not one of them is a no. proper GW model. <laughs> no, not, none of them were. It was interesting, but it told the story of like human evolution or alien evolution. Well, yeah, like some of the Tyranid models, I think, were just xenomorphs and stuff like that. There's that one. There's that one. Oh, no. It didn't go through. I need to show off uh, Thomas's board because it was great. Did Although, it go through or is it just not part of the slideshow? Is it in the folder? Um, no, it, it didn't send the email because it was like, I'll only send three of the pictures that you're oh, attaching because I'm horrible and I also won't tell you these things until after. So I'm going to grab it and send it over and add it because Thomas's board is absolutely beautiful and we got to hang out and chat a little bit, which made me very happy. Got to hang out with the tried and true people, uh, Erica and her boy Andrew, absolutely wonderful human beings. Like... If you want to keep supporting War Machine, man, like, go watch Tried and True because they are, in my opinion, kind of resurrecting and, like, keeping War Machine alive again because they made it so fun. They have narrative stuff they do. They have um, just terrain. a really, yeah, they, they believe in 3D terrain. <laughs> it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. I love, I love, I love, I love what they do. Here you go. You should put Bill's book on the thing. Yes, on the dice. I will. Just a moment. Oh, I didn't do it. Um, so, what else is there? That was the main thing. Adepticon, select folder. Mm -hmm. I did take a bunch of photos uh, of Golden Demon entries, <coughs> including ones that did not win in the likes, but they're all on DJ's phone, so I need to get there him is. to send them to me. <laughs> so, there is Thomas's board. And he made this beautiful Circle of Boros backdrop. The Bob Ross painting in the background looks even better in person. Because um, I know you posted a picture of it on my Facebook a while back, but this is it all set out and all pretty for the Armies on Parade. And it's, it's just nice, so nice to see it represented. So thank you for that. Yes, bangerang. So in meeting Bill Meat stuff, and this was, uh, this was a lovely gift of some Katachan dice. We'll see how they roll in a short time. I don't think I need to keep that rotating for this. So <laughs> we got fun to trying to read it as it moves around. I know. <laughs> um, so when I met Bill, I was like, hey, are you going to be doing a demo of your new game? And he's like, oh, well, maybe. But if I don't see you, here's the book. Don't throw it away. And here's proof that I did not, in fact, throw it away. But That's right. <laughs> it's not Every time Miranda saw him. <laughs> she would, she would uh, reinforce that she had not yet thrown it away. I had not yet thrown it away. So to this, so still, it's still true. So Bangarang is, a, so tons and tons and tons of indie games at Adepticon for starters. Let me just throw that out there. I was actually really impressed at how many demos were being done, how many people were there just looking to do small game demos. Um, and, and I don't mean like new company demos because like, Mini Wargaming was there with Ravage Star, and they had a really big booth, and they were doing demos, and I thought I might catch one, and that, that ended up not materializing. But uh, one of these days, <laughs> I'll try it. Um, Bolt Action, uh, the Warlord people, they had um, a new game out that was just the tank warfare, and so they were putting that out. Uh, but then you had um, like the, the folks who did the Shovel Knight game. They have their game out. They were pushing a bunch of small little demos for all kinds of games. And so it ended up being like this weird little like, there's a surprising under current, I guess, of like indie stuff happening at Adepticon. And so, yeah, Bill ended up playing some with some folks, Bangarang, which is where it's miniature agnostic. It encourages you to just make your own miniatures. And in fact, if you check it out, because he's a really good artist. <laughs> and so he makes some really fun little robots, like that guy. Uh, he's not Bead bots, that's right, because you can make them out of beads, because, you know. Yes. If you don't know what a bead bot is, you can go to his channel and have 
many videos instructing you on exactly how to make bead bots. Exactly, and it's it's super fun. It's the type of thing that you could, one, it's really, really inexpensive, super affordable to do. You can make stuff with your kids because it's, you know, it's, it's a type of arts and crafts that's, you know, you can be as complicated as you want with it, but it also, it does not have a high um, threshold to start. Or you can make bead bots with your dad. You can make bead bots with your dad. Oh, so you've got all these little sheets. So bangerang is one that we will have to try out at some point, I think. Yes. And it was really fun. Um, and then we got to go visit the historical people over at the other hotel, and I got to meet the lovely people at Lead Pursuit who threw me onto their podcast, and I got a shirt out of it, so thank you guys. That <laughs> was really They're fun. like, so what do you know about Blood Red Skies? And I was like, nothing. I play Bolt Action. <laughs> There's planes. <laughs> no, it was a good time. I loved, I loved the historical stuff. They were talking about the... Um, I don't know, they're just talking about like sort of the culture of, of um, historical gaming. And I don't know if you guys agree with this, but one of the comments I made on the podcast was like, I feel like we're all going to eventually age into historicals. Like, they're, like, for some reason, they get like more and more interesting as the years go by because there's something so analog about it. Like the newer games, they're pushing apps and they're pushing like just more digital interfaces. And it's really off-putting to me. Like, I don't want to play and need an app. Like an app is helpful as a supplemental, but ugh, I hate the idea of using it and needing it. And so like the historical stuff, it's not only so analog, but like there's so much more like homemade craftsmanship to like a lot of how the models are painted or how the terrain is done. <laughs> you see a lot more of that old school grass mat. Oh yeah, on and the they put like side, yeah, they, they put, had like actual hills uh -huh. that they would stretch the mats over. Yes, so it was the, so <laughs> the cool. Like was pitched. I had to, yeah, and I had to go get a picture of that because it, it's exactly that. You take like one of those mats and you put like books or something underneath it to give it this rolling hills. It's very organic look, and you're like, all oh, right. It's like you think of footprints and you know uh, regulated terrain essentially to to fit this to fit the rules, but there's just something really, mm, like, nice. Like, what is it? Well, they it? also don't, Honest? Uh, don't reset know. the knowledge base every three years. <laughs> <laughs> World War II now happened differently. This is how we're going with it. We're changing the lore. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, George Orwell. Um, so, yes, that was, that was really fun, too. So I appreciated them. Uh, let me catch up a little bit more in the chat, and then I'll talk about the swig. The swig. Oh, why is oh our our stream health has gone to poor. Great. Let's see here. Huh. Ishtar um, says I recommend the Embassy Suites. It's right across the parking lot from the con and way nicer rooms. Okay, good to know. Uh, we did not. By the time we booked hotels, like we were not within the sphere of any of the nearby hotels. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Brian, what? I would say we were walking distance if the weather was nice. Which it never was. It nope. snowed one of the days. It was cold. It's Chicago in March. Like, it's just, it's usually not very hospitable. Uh, let's see. Paul, I watched the Warhammer reveals on Valrak stream. He had about 8K viewers. So you and I were watching Valrak stream around the same time. We were kind of watching them talk about it. It seemed like not too many people were impressed with the reveal. Um, if you watched Adam, he was incredibly unimpressed with the reveal. Oh, I didn't see his <laughs> take. Yeah, he was like, people were just pretending to be interested. I'm like, damn. But, I mean, I, their, their biggest thing was just the new AOS um, edition it was kind of like their big, big reveal, I guess. I mean, there was some new... Um, there was a new combat patrol, uh, Votan, with Votan and stuff, and there was something with Eldar too, like a kill team or a yeah, some sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know. When it's stuff I don't play, like I don't remember it very well. I'm like, uh, not me, not me, not me. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, the cinematic for the new AOS was really pretty, though. It was really cool. Uh, let's see. Adeptus Ridiculous knows Bill makes stuff. Uh, JP got rockets. I got my first Adepticon sticker 
from Miranda way back in the day. She's the one that clued me into it being a thing. And then here I am forgetting <laughs> it years later. <laughs> I'm amazing. She dropped the clue. <laughs> um, I say as I could have easily brought stickers. I know. It's like... But you're on camera, so you get the blame. Yeah, that's fair. Um, one of the historical dudes was salty that they were running cell power in the main venue. Oh, I don't... Was cell power another historical? I guess it wasn't perfectly cleanly done. I know some people were like, oh, they sent all the historicals over there. But the other hotel is really nice, so I feel like they, they got a pretty good deal out of it. So historicals like Game of Thrones, uh, Song of Ice and Fire, and, and, like, and uh, uh, Lord of the, the Rings. Hobbit, and like, yeah. uh, what is it? Uh, I mean, I guess technically Star Wars happened a long time ago in a, in a galaxy that's, far, that's far away. So that's, that's history, right? That's true. I my favorite part of the Star Wars room were the Star Trek ships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a guy who had like re he had taken the, the rules and just swapped them all out with like various uh, um, uh, versions of the Enterprise, right? Well, they were all different. Why am I Starfleet? Yeah, <laughs> various oh, Starfleet ships. Starfleet ships. Yeah, I was, was really blanking cool. on that word. Uh, Houseman's always <laughs> puts us in the open pit area on the mezzanine. Okay. Thomas, uh, this year's Armies on Parade was limited to one per game system, aside from Warhammer. I had Shatterpoint on one side of me and a ton of Skaven on the other. Oh. Hey, War Budgies. We got to hang out with War Budgies, who ran a delightful, where I think it was delightful, you definitely had everyone entranced, uh, War, oh my gosh, Warcaster game. <laughs> Warcaster, like, yeah. campaign for the day. Um, so, got to uh, eat lunch with you before before going before you had to run off and do that. So it was good times. It was really good times. How much War Machine have you guys seen at Adepticon? We saw more than we saw the last time we were at Adepticon. <laughs> For one, it was uh, two two full table rows, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So the main, including an enormous dragon sitting in a lava hot tub. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that there's a campaign, I guess it's from last year, that people could play against. So I got to see the dragon up close, which was fun and exciting. And then they had a huge wall as this year's narrative campaign that people were either defending or attacking. And that's where those Garl Gas, the new um, Orgoth models, come in uh, or were revealed, I guess, to be able to, um, to play. Ha! Ah, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, War Machine had like a healthy presence. They sold out for the actual Iron Gauntlet. Um, there was a lot of attendance for the narrative stuff. Um, and then there was just people casually playing, like even aside from the, the sign-up tournaments. So it was really cool. <laughs> we're not a gang, we're a posse. <laughs> um, what's up, check? I am excited for AOS 4.0. All right, excellent. God, 4.0? Really? We're in fourth edition of AOS already? Huh. <laughs> I was like, I thought this was the second one. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh, yes, I finally brought my first purity seals. Space Wolves, the first. Very nice. Ishtar's name is John. We split a hotel. Yeah, it's the, the Titan. Yes! Yeah. Oh, okay. His armor cast stuff is awesome. I already booked the same spot for next year. Good, because it seemed like he had a really, really good time. And John was super fun to yeah, talk to. Yeah, like his spot he was very happy with. He's like, yeah, I just have a really high foot traffic area. And it was. So <laughs> there's so if you so the hotel itself, like there's this huge, huge vendor hall, but actually the vendors had spilled out outside of just the main vendor hall, which I, I'm sure you pay more to be there, and, and it closes at 6 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. And so the, the doors lock, and you can't do anything in the vendor hall past 6. But there's, like, the bits guy who's outside of that in the main hall. And then the second floor up by the skywalk, um, there were several booths, several additional booths kind of all clustered around there that and we could stay out because it was on the way to Golden fell. Demon. Uh, yeah, around the Golden Demon, exactly, because yeah. the Golden Demon was all on the second floor, so there was lots of reason to have foot traffic there. In addition to just the other games all being done in all these little tiny side rooms, like, ooh, we got to see the cool 3D um, printed Space Hulk, which, if I go next year, I want to sign up for Space Hulk, because that looks so fun. So they, they set it out, and I'll... I'll I'll get a picture on my Facebook or something because it's so cool. Yeah, I, have, I even have some video. Some video, it, right? yeah. So it's this massive Space Hulk 
map. And you sign up for it, you're one of six Space Marine teams. And so, and you all coordinate to try and defeat the Gene Stealers. And then the people who are running the event, there's two of them that play the Gene Stealers. So you're essentially playing against a game master. And they can kind of tailor the game to make sure people are having fun. And so you're one of like those six teams on sort of an isolated board. But what you do still affects the overall Space Hulk and... It just sounded really fun. <laughs> I think I think everybody participating had a really good time. Oh, it's cool. Even the um, so for fires, they have little like tea lights mm-hmm. with <laughs> like red printed flames on them. So the fires are actually kind of glowing, and then the blip yeah. markers are actually these little pucks that also uh, have little LEDs and they blip. <laughs> you know, like the lights. Yeah, the blips were great. So they're like proper blips. <laughs> you know, they look like there. fun little tea yeah. lights or. Or whatever, and is that a picture of Space Hulk? That's not, that is a picture. Mm, no, that's not. I don't know. I was saying if maybe I could quickly get one, but my tip, no, it's not gonna happen. Anyway, it was really, really cool. And then they had just had all these other games happening up there too. I mean, people were doing Titan battles, people were having ad hoc games, and outside of all of those little side um, event rooms, like just the hallway still had tables of just free play, whatever. So there's people hanging out and playing games. And years ago, I've even played on that second floor area before. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's a lot. It's a lot. Amazon is another good source for cheap brushes. True fact. Has anyone else used Dwarven Forge for skirmishes? If you haven't, John from Dad's Army has a lot of classic goodies. Uh, War by G's. Adepticon is maximum chaos. It's awesome energy. It is, it is a really, really exciting and cool feeling it can be overwhelming it can be tiring <laughs> a little bit um oh dang i lost it <laughs> let's see <laughs> i think the the chat got uh got ahead of me well it doesn't let me highlight stuff really well let's see Dwarven Forge, I've collected it since its inception. Oh, well, never. No, Dwarven Forge is really cool. Like, it's it, it's it's a really good set. I, we just hadn't really gotten into it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen it for years, too. Any thoughts on going to ReaperCon in the fall? That is in Denton, Texas. I think ReaperCon, if I remember correctly, falls on exactly the same weekend as Nova. Reaper Con 2024. Let's see if I'm correct. Because I know Dragon Con falls on the same weekend. It's like, oh, that's a lot of. Yep, August 28th through September 1st. So I will be at Nova. Because <laughs> I got to be. I represent. But um, Reaper Con honestly does sound fun. And honestly, so does Dragon Con. Although it's another humongous convention. That one sounds insanely overwhelming with the whole. Entirely, entirety of Con? downtown oh, yeah. Atlanta. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh! We'll go but I can't point. go without having some awesome costume like that. You, you have to have an awesome costume oh, to go sure. to Dragon Con, in my opinion. So, yes. But yeah, I thought I thought Reaper Con fell in that same week, and I'm like, ah, it'd be so much closer. <laughs> but no, uh, Jacob. Oh yes, I've been painting for 30 years. I finally bought 20 flat wide xenon brushes. Zonon. Zonon brushes. Uh, to trash. I have to ask, what was the number one crowd grabber there at Adepticon? Golden Demon. I would say it probably is the Golden Demon, just based on the queue. Um, There's a fun giant Space Marine Terminator there. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if you've gone to conventions, you kind of see him every time. Yeah. Like, the same Terminator sort of shows up at all the conventions, and it's always super cool. Like, he looks great. He grabs the crowd with his power He does. Mm. At least in my imagination, he does. So yeah, um, I guess Golden Demon, even though I didn't actually go look at it. <laughs> uh, gosh, it's, it's probably that as a singular thing, because it's like, the Armies on Parade event was really cool too. It's such a short snippet of time, but I, like, I always, always like looking like at that. it. Like that's, I don't know. It's a certain staple. You know? Calls to me a little more so than the Golden Demon stuff personally, but... yeah. Um, and if you feel like dropping a lot of money, the vendor hall is a blast. But <laughs> yeah. The vendor hall does get really crowded, too, though. It super Especially does. Especially those Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday time. like. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. Um, and then obviously the Warhammer reveal was like a big, a big event. Although I don't know that anything was really dropped that is so major, except for the AOS fans out there. Hmm. Uh, Jacob, I have a bunch of Makus brushes, Macus brushes. Makeup. Probably. Oh, makeup brushes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes way more sense. Uh, Paul Suggs from Rogue Hobbies made a cool video showing off some Golden Demon entries. I actually watched that. So I was like, this is going to be the best opportunity I have to see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just see any of these images. And I know there was a big controversy because one of the winners, um, it was a single model on a backdrop, right? So it's like this um, Eldari, I think, going through like a forest. And then there's this forest background behind him. And the forest background was made of AI art. And so people were, there was, there was a bit of a controversy as to whether or not he should win because of the use of AI art, even though the miniature was still completely painted by him and looked fantastic. Yeah, the, the miniature and, and the base for the miniature, and the not base, including yeah. the background. Because if you look at the miniature's base, it's interesting because he's on a rock, he has a waterfall, and the <coughs> little resin bit that you look at actually has fish swimming in it also. Oh, goodness. Yeah, so printed up. plenty of attention to detail in that regard, so... It became like this question of like, well, should you be allowed to use any of it, or should you just be an amazing well, I, painter I aside might, from? I think there might be a slippery slope argument, though. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it it seems like, you know, his use of it was probably fairly um, well intentioned, and and you know what I mean, like on the up and up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you just look at his and you go, ah, eh, it's probably fine. But then it's just like, I don't know. At what point? <laughs> you know, three years from now, is it just like? Yeah, I have a miniature, and most of this is like printed stuff that AI art did, or that other. That's you true. Know, and it's like, it, and, it's, and at some it's point, they're the probably, principle behind it. Well, I think it's like it's fine this time at least, but maybe in future iterations of Golden Demon or whatever painting challenges there are, there's probably going to have to be some kind of rule addressing the use of AI art in it. Yeah. And that would have to be the restraint because, because there was no rule for it this time. Like there, there hmm. wasn't anything against the rules that he did. I don't think so. No. And really, the complaint in general just was that you know if he wanted to have that background, he should have painted it himself. Is what people are saying. And eh, you know. I, I understand the sentiment, but there were no rules against it. He didn't break any rules. I don't see. All right. His, his model was still beautifully done. Yeah. It's like I see the argument they're making, for mm -hmm. sure. But for sure. it's like, I don't know. He he worked within the rules. So yep. it's just the question is, should there be rules? And if so, what should they be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, JP Gower, because I wasn't overly impressed by anything in Golden Demon. The paint styles are all copying each other. You know, one of the fun things about, if you watch um, Suggs from Rogue Hobbies, she shows the Golden Demon entry winner from like 1989 or something like that, or 1990, and you're like, wow, we have come so far. <laughs> like, <Not really. laughs> like it's, a, it's a perfectly fine painted model, but it's just... It's like tabletop quality, you know, in a way. It's probably a little better than tabletop quality, but it's not on this whole diorama. With like some of the older stuff I've seen, yeah. it's like, it's, it, it, I know what you're talking about, but it's like the, some of it's just that older style yeah. where the colors were brighter and they tried to just make things pop more. Pop, exactly. And so there's still a lot of detail that goes into it, but just the, the, um, uh, what do you call it? The sensibility of the paint job is just very different. <laughs> and <clears throat> if you think great. about it, it's one of the problems that you have with a painting competition like Golden Demon is really you look at the trends. And whatever the trend is, uh, you really do follow it. So if a lot of the things looked very similar, a lot of the techniques looked very similar, it's because that's the trend. What That's what people are looking for that year. And so that's what people are doing. Uh, if way. you fall out of that trend... You may get recognition for it, or they just won't look at you. It's it's a it's a bit of a gamble. Well, I would say that one of the things that you can do that's kind of the other direction, right? It's the the red cocktail dress, mm -hmm. where it's just like you you kind of see what the trend is, and you go, oh, okay, I'll do the thing that's opposite of that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, everyone's that's supposed to wear it's black like... and white, I'm wearing red. You know, it's yeah. like it's like oh well, I'll go a very different way, because then it's like I mean, like maybe like J JP's mentioning, it's like well. Maybe you do a thing that's like a different, a whole different sensibility that stands out, and so if yours stands out, then everything else looks a little more samey. True, know? true. But you gotta, I mean, you gotta commit and be bold with it, though. I think if you're gonna do that, you're definitely, definitely. Otherwise, I think Flo's probably right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like it's a gamble if you decide to go the opposite direction. Like 
It can be a gamble. It's whether or not they're willing to look at what you did as something unique and great or if they're really just dead set on uh, whatever the tradition is for that year, whatever the trend is. I, I don't know. I bet the judges are probably pretty open-minded. I know the ones for on Capitol Palace are all... But usually you have a lot of them. So there's a lot of different opinions that get in there. It's not just, like, three people deciding everything, usually. So, I, I don't know. I I mean, and then who's setting those trends anyway? Like, I don't think Sam Lenz is, like, looking at people to follow. Like, I think he does his own thing, and then people probably are more trying to copy him, if anything. Well, I think there's probably, like, um, kind of an echelon up there of the pro painters. And, yeah. And it's just, like, you just, you know they talk. They, yeah. they see what each other does. Like, stuff like that. And That's that, true. And I, and that might be the concern, right? Is that those guys maybe create a little bit of a not a group think, but they just sort of like uh, it ends up in a homogenization of of style. Well, they all end up just finding the same cool thing at the same time. Mm. You know what I mean? Maybe that sort of that sort of idea. But I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Jacob, same here, Thomas. I went deep on all the uh, case sep case except the dice holders. And the most recent space one. Oh. Uh, Thomas, tried and true, and Minority Reports are both awesome groups. That's true. Minority Report. Um, I saw some dudes there from uh, from that channel as well. That board was ridiculous. It's awesome. I know he did such a good job, didn't he? Uh, JP Got Rockets works with any game publisher. Yes, yes, you do. And now I'm trying to remember the details of that. Adam said people were falling asleep during the GW presentation. Oh, goodness. Um, GP, remind me of the game. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was that first night in the meet and greet where he was talking to yes. us about it. It's like... You're talking about it, and then we that's... We just gotten off of a, of a train ride. I know, and I thought <laughs> I'd find you in the game hall later. I'm sorry, in the vendor hall later. And I didn't, just because the vendor hall was bananas every time I went. But either way... You didn't spend very much time in the vendor hall at all. True. I think I visited quite uh, a few times. Well, we went multiple times. We I don't know that we ever actually got all the way through it though. Yeah, that's true. Because we would go in there and take ran a into so many direction. people. We did. Oh and my so, gosh. okay, maybe we spent time in there, but not looking at stuff. <laughs> that's fair. That's totally fair. All right, let's see here. Uh, Mr. Kyle, how much time you guys spend on each stuff in the con? Twenty-five percent gaming, twenty-five percent seeing vendors, twenty-five percent hanging with creators. Uh, well, one night we spent like an hour or hour and a half maybe hanging out with the creators in the creator meetup. But we, so stuff overlapped, right? So it's like we'd go to the vendor hall, but then I'd meet at least a dozen people at any given time of people I just knew. So I'd see like Doug at Table War or Dave at Mini War Gaming or Adam or Jonathan from, formerly from Cool Mini. Like, well, it seems just like a ton half of people. The creators that we know. Mm -hmm. are in the vendor hall, like, kind of running their hustles, you know Yeah, I mean? like, like, they've become industry people. And, yeah. I mean, that's happened to a lot of people. I mean, kind I mean, of in mini wargaming, too, right? Like Kind of us. I mean, like, we're invested in a convention now. Like, it's, it's an interesting thing because the wargaming community, I guess, is still small enough that people who have been you know, part of the community are now actually like becoming more part of the industry side of the community. And, and so that's really cool to see. So, so a lot of the socializing we did happened in the vendor hall. And so it's like quasi shopping and hanging out and chatting and yeah. catching up with people. Um, you know, seeing uh, Austin from like Death Ray Designs or oh, yeah. chatting yeah. with the guys at the Privateer Press for Hire, booth. which is where we met. <laughs> right, back when he was Brush for Hire, exactly. Um, chatting with the Privateer Press guys, that was actually really fun. Uh, just shooting <laughs> shit, you know, and um, like. Yeah, even, even Adam is kind of working with. Um, Army Painter. Army Painter. Mm -hmm. And so he was kind of there mm -hmm. working on that. Yeah, so like. I, I don't know. And we didn't really do. I did, like, the teeny tiniest amount of gaming because I didn't end up bringing any armies. I thought I'd bring 40K, and then I didn't have a really good way of packing it, and then I was like, how much stuff am I going to carry? And then we'd wet the cosplay instead, and then I thought I'd have my War Machine army. I ran out of time for that. <coughs> well, we did spend a significant amount of time <coughs> around a War Machine game. We did. So as far as the gaming goes, and I don't know, maybe this counts, but we finally, actually, believe it or not, 
And, and it's so funny, but... Okay, so we finally recorded a War Machine battle report with the tried and true people. So Erica and her husband agreed to a game. And so we did a 50-point narrative-based battle report. And I was really, really hoping that I could have it edited and out by April 1st. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <clears throat> and then I got sick. As soon as we got back, I was like tired and sick and laid out. And then you got sick, and we're still just like recovering and uh, a little bit. so annoying. Well, we had we had friends come back with us, and then we were doing a lot of uh, right. So we were just kind of continuing that socializing for another yeah. week after that, and uh, it was a bunch. So it was it was it was a lot. It was a lot, a lot, and it was wonderful. But I loved it. So. So, yeah, so we did the War Machine Battle Report on Thursday. So the Creator Meetup on Wednesday, battle, War Machine Battle Report on Thursday. Friday was a lot of, like, hanging out with miscellaneous people, going to dinner, going to lunch. Um, I think it was, was it Friday or Saturday that I got um, dragged, not dragged into. It was, it was totally fine. We, we ended up doing a Malifo through the Breach um, RPG. <laughs> Well, but it was it's like okay. You can say dragged into it because it was your friend who dragged you into true. it. True. Aaron, Aaron dragged me into it. It was a relatively small group. I think some people didn't show up, and so my friend Aaron was in it, and there were these two other guys, and so He's I joined. Like, Randy, you gotta join. And you're like, yeah. Oh, fine. So it was the four of us, and it was it was fine. It was fun, but we had to cut it short because we had to go get the interview. We had to follow up from our battle report to do oh, the interview yeah. part, and just working around everyone's schedule was just a bit of a challenge. So and the then, theory is that our battle report. Will be fully painted, current armies, uh, played by people who are familiar with the game and mm -hmm. know how it's played. <laughs> so that's kind of what we've been looking for. Um, we got to meet Mr. Joe from the Angry Joe Show, who, yeah. was, who was running around Adepticon. Like he likes tabletop gaming, which was really cool. Yeah, we kind of chatted with him for a bit. We did. We did. He hated your hat. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But yeah, he was really nice. So. Um, so I guess part of it was like socializing and networking, and I would say that was probably 50% of our time at Adepticon yeah. <laughs> for us. And then, you know, 20% of it was doing the battle report, maybe even 25% because we had to follow up and get that interview and stuff. And then just looking at a lot of games, I didn't get to demo anything. I don't think I did. Um, and then, yeah, I played the one Malifo game, and that was, that was it. And then some vendor shopping, which was probably like, 10% of, of our well, time. What percentage is like sitting on one of the couches and being asleep? <laughs> that's a, that's a, a non-zero percent. <laughs> I never fell asleep on the couch. I most certainly I did. did. Not. I did. You did. You did. did. The boys. <laughs> it's funny because on the second floor out in front of the hotel at I'm sorry, out in front of the restaurant at the hotel they have all these little seating areas and there's really nice little like communal seating areas. <laughs> it wasn't just like my crew, I guess, who would no, go no. find a spot on a seat and then just <laughs> fall asleep no, for you a little bit. You never went up there at, at any point and looked around and saw zero sleepers. True. Like, there are always people kind of napping because it is. It's an overwhelming event. Well, and especially if you don't have a room there and you're so overwhelmed. Or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you, I don't know, been lugging gear around <laughs> for hours and it gets a little tired. Ooh, Orbit just said there's going to be an insider about his uh, Warcaster game soon. Sweet. Oh, cool. Ah, all right, everyone, did a YouTuber named Ninjon won a Golden Dragon or Golden Demon? He won uh, bronze, I think, on the yes, Golden Demon. Did. So, yeah, he has a video out called A YouTuber Won Golden Demon. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so congratulations to Ninjon. Yeah, Ninjon seems cool. Um, uh, I, didn't I don't actually. think we chatted with him. No, he there. stayed really busy. Like did. some we, of the artists I got talked to. We were to, standing but... next to him, but we ended up talking to Sam. That's right. Uh, Sam Lenz, because we know we've known Sam for years and I know. It's funny because <laughs> even the last time I saw him at Nova, he's like, That's so weird. Like we've just known each other for so long, like <laughs> yeah. in this community. I'm like, this is kinda weird. Yeah. And then it's we like have... going to high school perpetually or something. Like you just know that person from another class or something. That was one of my favorite things though, because I'm not as big into the community and the likes, but I really enjoyed getting to meet up with people I hadn't seen in years, like War Budgies and Dave. Yes. I haven't seen in many years. Yes. He recognized me still, so that was interesting. You know, just kind of see people, meet up with people, you know, see how everyone's doing. Oh, yeah. That's good times. Let's see here. Um, so, yeah, Ninjon, congratulations to him. Brian, love the Ice and Fire mini game. It's very easy to learn. Song of Ice and Fire is honestly a really fun miniature game. I've always enjoyed it whenever I play it. And then I don't 
hardly ever gets played. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. Um, my only complaint is that due to its nature with the trays and the likes, it is flat. So the minis can look really cool, but the That's boards true. do the, not. The boards could do with some updating. Is there an adventure outside? <clears throat> um, what happened? Oh, well, since you're asking, I'm going to go ahead and say it on there. Uh, the cleaning people showed up because they were doing a meeting earlier. Yeah, that's all the noise oh, so they were like, told to wait. Yeah, and so they're like, can we come in and back <laughs> I was like, yeah, we'll probably be done in like 20 minutes, so you can come in and start setting up. Okay, okay. Well, that's, so. that's nice of them to ask. Uh, board budget says War Machine had a great showing. Uh, tables were full. It's funny because I think it was like their 12 year old son that was kind of poking in, like Aww. looking. Oh, how cute. Thomas Bitergast was there at the Battle of Scarsfell for the night for the narrative events, as well as the wall from Boar's Gate. I played all the narrative events and had a blast. See, and I love that, right? Because now there's actual stuff happening that took place in the lore that has meaning in the game, and I don't know. I feel like narratives are are kind of the new direction that a lot of miniature games are going. Obviously, GW's, you know, developing their whole narrative campaign. The U.S. Opens and stuff are going to have more narrative stuff happening with the grand narrative in November in Atlanta again. War Machine, I think, needs to, to join that because narratives make it fun. Uh, when Mini Wargaming, uh, their battle reports, their narratives always had, their narrative campaigns always saw more vault memberships than any of their other type of content because they're based in stories and it just makes it inherently more interesting. What are you doing? Dropping stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, but my local GW game were raging about Ninjon winning. They do not like YouTubers at all. Like, what the heck is that about? It's like, oh, you're on the <laughs> internet. You're no longer a human. Thanks. Uh, so War Machine is back, baby. Maybe, maybe. Uh, there will be a battle report soon. Uh, thanks to the lovely folks at Tried and True. Uh, I guess Space Hulk venue is a Terminus, Terminus gang brawler game. Yeah, basically. Um, so how much does it cost to go to Adepticon? I mean, not just counting, buying stuff. Historicon usually costs me around seven fifty. Well, I mean, are you talking about travel and the likes, or just talking about yeah. tickets to be in? Because it really depends on how far you're going, what way you're traveling, how much you're taking, well, what let's, classes let's give you're it, taking. Let's, let's give it a bit of a breakdown. Well, just the tickets to get in, or what? Like, so you base can level. you could spend anywhere from I think it's like sixty bucks if you just want a badge. And that's what you need to sign up for other events. You do not need a badge to go to Adepticon and shop. So if you're just looking to buy stuff, that's free. Except well, for the amount of money you're spending <coughs> to, to buy stuff. There. Well, or to get there, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of locals that go, right? Um, and then I think we paid 160 for the it's swag 133. bag. 133 yeah. Oh, okay. So 133 Maybe I was after I like added stuff because like it, I, we got it's some. It's also adding on like things that you buy mm -hmm. and then adding on the fact that you're shipping your badge to you and stuff right. like that. So one thirty three ish for the swag bag, which you have to pick up in person, um, and then the hotel. I want to say is around one fifty to two hundred a night, probably. So the hotel's tricky though because it sells out. Instantly. It sold out in two minutes this <laughs> yeah. last time. It was absurd. So really, it's just... Two minutes in what, August? Yeah, in August. Yeah, as soon as they announce the actual date. Mm, the hotel block goes up, and then it's all, yeah. it's all gone. And so it's like, at that point, you... I don't know, Airbnb, you have a friend, you... It's like, it's it's just like... At or that you point, stay at a nearby anywhere. hotel. So the Adepticon website, if you can find it, because it does not show up on Google. Horrible SEO, but... The actual Adepticon website has a list of other hotels they've kind of partnered with. And so you can go to a lot of those other hotels. It's just ideal to stay at the Renaissance if you can or if you have a car. Uh, but parking is a nightmare situation, so that's a whole separate issue. Um, I don't know. I could see you dropping a grand easily going to Adepticon between, like, just the hotel badge and, like, buying a few things. I mean, you can drop a lot of money in the vendor hall. Well, at that point, and that's your true. mileage varies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So it ranges anywhere from zero, if you live <laughs> locally and just want to walk in and look around, to $1,000 if you're, you know, driving from a nearby place. Uh, it's even more if you have to travel a great distance. Exactly. Um, if you travel by uh, yacht <laughs> from uh, Spain. It could then, be a little, you know, a little more. <laughs> yeah. I'm really sad I wasn't at Adepticon this year, but I will be next year. Another year to build a ton of cool stuff. Oh, sweet, Plunderden. Yeah. I look forward to 
seeing you there. JP Got Rockets. Dragon Con is awful. I went one year and that was enough for me. Oh, I have to go one time at least. You have to have at least See, you did go and experience it. Now you have an opinion on it. Yeah. We have no opinion. JP well, says it's kind of like going to the biggest uh, Renaissance fair. Oh, we got there and we were like, we are so excited. And we got there, we're like, this is awful. It was it's awful. awful. <laughs> it was a really hard. So I love the Renaissance, like, I love Ren Fairs. But the one in Colorado, I don't think we'll ever go to again. Oh, yeah. yeah, that one was. It was too much. It's eight weekends in Larkspur, Colorado, which is between Carl um, Colorado Springs and Denver. But they have no cap on the number of people that can be there in any given day. And it's like 20,000 people or something a day in there. And it's this multi-acre set up with these permanent buildings. And well, it's kind of on the side of a hill as well. So it's yeah. a three-dimensional space it's, you have to walk up and down. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a little treacherous to walk. It's in no way handicap accessible. So just don't even bother if you are wheelchair bound, like, or if you need a cane or if you're on a rascal, like you cannot get around uh, that area if you need that kind of help. And then it was just so crowded everywhere we went. It, got, it became exhausting. We waited like half a circle and left. Well, it, it was weird. Uh, so, you know, you've been to places like maybe a big convention or something, and it is different just standing on like smooth concrete yeah. and, and like, being in that crowd versus like negotiating up and down kind of constant angles. that's like it, ruddy dirt you know like dirt triples with ruts. the amount of fatigue somehow it does. I'm not sure but it's crazy and you're just constantly behind people or you stop for a second someone's bumping into you like it was a lot <laughs> although i did have my confessor dress on from the uh sort of truth series and i got noticed which was really exciting <laughs> um that this uh, i agree with disembodied voice because the actual thing is miniatures are not <clears throat> Are not the backdrops. How did they know it was AI art? JP got rockets. I assume someone. I assume like the artist probably told them. Yeah, I imagine. I, I figure sure that's probably how it came it. out. Yeah. Um, he wasn't breaking any rules. Why wouldn't he? You know. <laughs> More budgies. There's also a mandatory kerfuffle every golden demon. So the AI art seems to fit this year's quota. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Magic That's Quicks probably well put right there. I know, right? Uh, Quick sense is not related to Adepticon. My first Facebook post. <laughs> is Codex, second story is an incredible sororitous knight from one page rules. In my opinion, if any knight ever tempted you, if any knight ever tempted, you add an ally to your sister's army. This is it. Ooh. Well, your hmm. sister's army is going to have a knight. Yeah, yeah. I've actually been uh, figuring out, well, two different ones for two different sizes. So an armager and a, I was looking at probably the paladin mm -hmm. uh, build, but, uh, but yes, uh, those are some projects I've been kind of working on for a little while. Hello, Andrew Fairbanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's like saying 3D model being printed counts as it's a borderline situation. Oh, like if you had a 3D print that you painted versus one like you modeled and printed and painted, if that would make a difference? Or? Well, that, does, that is strictly forbidden to have one that you have not modeled yourself. So for what it's worth, it seems like the vacuum is coming loud and clear. Yeah, okay, through, that so. sounds right. So. Well, I want to, I have to show off a couple more things. So, stuff from the swag bag. One, we, well, this was not from the swag bag. The Dirty Down booth was really wonderful. We got to buy some lovely um, weathering stuff from there. I also got this really sweet pendant that is heavy, but I've been wearing it everywhere. I loved it. Um, the swag bag itself included a whole bunch of stuff, like a uh, little Penny Dreadful from the Malifo stiff. Um, everybody got a combat patrol or like an Age of Sigmar type of thing. I ended up getting chaos. I wanted to trade it out. Ran out of time. There was a huge trading uh, Facebook thing that was really like lively and kept going. But it uh, I, again, I I just didn't have a lot of time to go mess with it. We got this really cool, sweet gaming mat. This was from the Games and Gears booth. Um, it was like 25 bucks, I think. And it's really nice, it's a whole silicone mat that, you know, it has these little areas that you can put your bits and the whole thing is bordered so you don't have to worry about your modeling pieces rolling away from you while you're assembling. And one of the selling factors they were giving on it is that you can put it in your dishwasher. Oh yeah, supposedly you can put it in the dishwasher, although I don't know if I do that. Got a sweet old dice tray that, um, that we actually use for the battle report. So. That was all pretty cool. And then lastly, because I don't 
want to leave it hanging. <clears throat> Paul sent me some stuff for my birthday. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying to think if there's anything we need to go over in here. There was oodles of things in the swag bag. Yeah, there's a uh, Battletech blind boxes, Marvel, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Star Wars Legion, Star Different Wars Shatterpoint. There was, of course, the Victoria miniature, the um, con exclusive that everyone got. So did you go over the, the big trading item? The big trading item of the combat patrol? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody was constantly trading out like, was, which combat patrol they wanted. There was so much trading of Adepticon, at Adepticon of combat patrol or people offering to take Bye. combat patrol off your hands for 60 bucks. Because right. you know like they can just resell it for like way more. Um, and so that ended up staying really busy. I just wish I could have just traded mine. So I don't know what I'll do, because what the heck am I going to do with chaos? Who needs chaos? I have enough chaos in my life without having a miniature version of it. Yeah. Yeah, of all the, uh, the factions and stuff we've messed around with, uh, Chaos Marines isn't, hasn't really been one of them. Oh, yeah. And they're not even the Nurgle ones, because if they were, I'd probably still give them a shot. Oh, and just yeah. to shout or, it out there. Or unleash flow on them. Well, I've, I've got the Death Guard, and DJ got Tau. He, he traded for Tau. He got the Tau. Oh, you then. did get some Death Guard? Yeah, I got Death Guard. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, cool. that's just straight up what I got was Death just Guard. Just a painting project yeah. waiting to happen right there. <laughs> Nurgle's um, always fun. Like, you can do a lot of really creative stuff with it. So. Well, and I, I also, before she moves on, I got, I don't know if this will show up or not. I got myself a mini to paint for fun. Let me fix that. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Much better, right? I got myself a mini to paint for fun. Um, is that better or should I go higher? Just one more, huh? Yeah, she looks cool. Yeah, she's not fully put together. I've got blue stuff on her right now because I'm hey, doing You want to get a brush behind some of those limbs? Yeah, you cannot get a brush behind them, so. That was pretty exciting, yeah. So you, so you got some shopping done? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I didn't buy very much. I just... Um, the first couple days I was there, I was like, oh, look at all the things I want. Oh, I know. I'm going to talk myself down from at least half of them because <laughs> I don't have time to paint my own things generally. Uh, you did get a thing. What were the little chibi guys? I do have a chibi guy. Here's my chibi dude. Is it just one? I just got the one. DJ got a few. Oh, he's cute. I can, I can pull him up closer, too, so yeah. you can see him better. What's he from? Is he from an IP? Uh, not that I know of. I think he's just for fun. Oh. It's a pumpkin general. Uh, they do have other like pumpkin head characters, but this one has his top hat with a little bird on it. So nice. he's pretty cute. I, I still have one from when I went. What, when did we go back? 2015, 2016? 2016. 2016. I got the notification we on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's and right. I still have one of my chibi miniatures from then. It was a little velociraptor. Uh -oh. So I still have him. Excellent. Who I haven't painted yet. So Excellent. this is what I mean by like a lot of things I want to buy and paint, but do I have time to paint them? Uh, so just to properly plug it, because JP got rockets and he's a cool guy and he was there hustling at Adepticon, hustling his game. Sea Dog Game Studios is who he was representing. So we have, we have our flagship game, Sail Power, and our sci-fi offering, Tech Commander, which third edition is on its way. We also do some work for Raw Partha Legacy. So if you saw Sea Dog Game Studios, the gentleman in the fez that wasn't Adam, uh, would be would be Mr. JP Got Rockets. And yeah, I I assume you probably got some good uh, demos in for. Uh, for that. I think a lot of people did demos on like Thursday and Friday. I think when we were talking to the vendor people, because uh, Death Ray had their game out too. They were like on Saturday, people are just like bouncing from con vendor oh, to vendor yeah. so fast. <clears throat> so yeah. Thomas, fortunately my immune system shrugs off any threat of con cred. Chili dog therapy for the win. Oh, that was it. I didn't have enough green chili in my system. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised I managed to make it out without getting sick. I'm the one who always gets sick. I know. I, I usually don't. Mm -hmm. and, uh. I, you know, I didn't even get sick until, like, well after the con. Mm. It was all of the sickies afterwards giving it to you. Maybe, maybe it was the know. train. Maybe it wasn't even the convention. I know, right? <laughs> like, who knows? Uh, Mandragora Maybe Mandragora. it was Meow Wolf. You know? <laughs> like, who knows? Maybe. Maybe. I think I was already feeling it a little bit, though, before you went. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, know. I, I don't even know if I got the same thing you did. That's true. 
Andrew Gore, I'm a little surprised Joe was out there. Street Fighter did okay, but I heard Mortal Kombat won't be made, so his cooperation to make board games based on fighting games is over. Oh. I don't know well, that he was he promoting anything. He wasn't he was promoting just... anything as far as I know. He was just there exploring a bunch of things. Um, we even saw like the video, or, like some videos and stuff of what he did, and mm-hmm. he was just checking out a lot of the other yeah. games. Yeah, yeah, I think he was just him. looking at ex- just yeah, just yeah, enjoying the convention. Honestly, well, he and a friend of his have been have been doing like uh, uh, Warhammer battle games reports on the and channel. games on yeah. his channel. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think he was just kind of just checking it out. He's mm-hmm. he's got a huge collection of, of Warhammer stuff. So, <laughs> Mr. Kyle, is there anything you wished you did but couldn't? I wish I could have participated in the War Machine games. I actually was genuinely like feeling. Oh yeah. Sad. I, I walked up, Miranda's just like, you know, staring on at, at the little group of of uh, <laughs> of, of uh, um, war machine players that are listening to the next round and she's just like I wish I'd join. <laughs> I know, I did. So if I go next year I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up for at least a day of gaming because I need to do something. Like not doing any gaming at Adepticon is actually also really hard. Like, doing just gaming there is exhausting in a different way, and I've done that before, where I had, like, I think two days of gaming, and that kind of burned me out. But no gaming, you just so, you just feel yeah. so much like you're missing out on everything. And, like, seeing that community <coughs> coming back, it was just, it was really nice. So, so I, I do wish that I had actually participated in the War Machine games. I didn't sign up or do anything, so there's a lot of stuff that I kind of wish that I had really paid attention to and like gotten into tried some of the smaller painting competitions yeah maybe. yeah there were um, a lot. done done some of the classes maybe but i haven't been in so long that i really just wanted to go and check out what it was and what it had become and what was going on and see what i might want to do for the future i think if you go and you don't have any plans and you don't sign up for anything and you're there the whole time it does become a lot though you kind of run the gambit of having gone through the vendor hall like 10 different times and <laughs> yeah so if you're gonna go for the full time you really want at least a, a thing or two to do every day I think yeah and then it's nice if you're with a group of people too and if everyone has kind of their own interests then you sort of reconnect later and you're like oh I did this and I did this like it helps you share that experience a little bit more like I didn't go do a painting class but if I was talking to a friend of mine who did do it like you get sort of a vicariousness of that so I also recommend not going alone if you can help it. Like, it's fun with people, right? I'm more of a professional observer. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. so my big regret is not having gotten a, ho- a room at the hotel. Yeah. So I can drop <laughs> off all my gear. All of your gear, so you all of your stuff. The whole time. He got to be a little bit of a pack mule. I pack mule a fair bit. Thank you very much. But um, JP Got Rockets, I got to do some work on the Kathy Wapple charity paint and pass diorama for Marvel Heroes Crisis Protocol. I think that's what you're meaning. Uh, that, or is that the mental health charity? There's too many initials. But yes, that is wonderful. You got to do that. It's really unfortunate with Kathy Wapple's unfortunate passing. Um, I feel like next year, Flo should definitely spend more time at Fort Wapple. Mm hmm. Hanging yeah, I spent I didn't almost. That was the name of a thing. <laughs> I spent very little time there, but like personally, just walking by it because I don't know very much about it. I was just like, well, this is where people reserve seats, and they go and they sit there and they they paint because they reserved these seats and they brought their stuff. It's like, no, no, all that stuff's out there, so you can just go and paint any time. If I had known that, I <laughs> yeah. probably would have spent more time there. But I didn't, so I didn't. Well, it's one of those things, like, you <laughs> You don't arrive, know what you don't know. Well, it's like you arrive, and you look around, and you're like, oh, this is here. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is here. It's mm-hmm. like, you almost have to go a year before you know what it is you really want to do. And that's know? kind of what this year was, because it had been so long since I had last gone, that, like, I, it's so vastly different at this point. I mean, some of the things are still there, but it's just so much bigger. There's so much more to do that... I, I had to go this year and just kind of figure just things out. Just figure it out, yeah. And, I mean, it's going to be bigger next year, so <laughs> oh, buckle yes, in. But, but the change, I feel like, isn't going to be as drastic as from, like, 2016. No, no, <laughs> certainly not. <laughs> Don't you know we content creators aren't humans? We're meat puppets dancing for the public amusement. I know. Well, it's just so what? Some, so some salty, like, rando at a game store in some other country can be like, you're not so great. It's like, Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> oh, man. 
Board Budgies. The swag bags are fun, though, because they're a very active Facebook trade group for people who run around and swap for what they really want. Yeah, if you are good at doing that, I think we traded, like, or we sold, like, one item. No, I mean, no well, we gave a couple. We gave a couple. And then uh, I got to, like, go and make a... Make a like a covert deal out in front of the restaurant for like a <laughs> box of Ewoks, like they were some sort of contraband. It was great. I uh, we actually managed to, because there was a lot of stuff in the swag bag, and a lot of people just wanted to buy things at that point. So we sold off a lot of stuff yeah. rather than trading it. That's good. Because the one thing that everyone wanted to trade for was combat patrol. So if you didn't get in on it and get your bag early on and start asking for it, yeah, you were not gonna get more combat patrol. It True was fact. it was already over. True People fact. want yours, and that's about it. Tom. But we got rid of most of our stuff. Okay. Uh, Thomas, I found parking easier this year than last year, even though the crowd was larger at Adepticon. Maybe I was lucky. I guess if you... Well, I don't know when you were showing up, Thomas, but I, my understanding is if you show up early and get a parking spot and you just don't leave until late, then you're good. It's just if you were to drive away for, say, lunch, you're really going to have a really hard time finding a spot again. Check a rhubarb. Go to Historicon. Live the dream. Historicon is great. I stopped at Gettysburg on the way back. Oh, that, sounds, that does sound fun. Uh, Brian, thank you. I appreciate the breakdown on the cost of events. Definitely doable for me. I spent 3000 at Historicon one year, but then made 2500 back selling in the flea market of used items. Nice. Who sold oh, the yeah. pendant? The pendant came from the Dirty Down booth. I don't know what it else was, they called I, it. I think it was just like a guy that... So there's, what, two guys, I think, that worked at the Dirty Down booth. Uh-huh. And then they just knew a guy who handmade these and so they were just i think selling his merch there yeah they're really good there was this one in like a chaos one that's really really cool it too. did look really cool but it was evil so obviously i couldn't wear that one um and yeah so i didn't meet th but these were all apparently like handmade by blacksmith yeah and so it's yeah, really it's like cool it's got a good weight dude. to it and it's even very pointy so it's a little bit of a weapon if i wanted if i needed it to be if i really needed it to be <laughs> uh andrew fairbanks happy boy's birthday sanko sanko uh, birds make everything better. If it flies, it spies. <laughs> Old school armies. John from Battle ca uh, Castings um, was the retro British guy. Oh, that's right. Great models. I'm biased as it was me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Great cool. to meet you folks. Big fan of the channel. You're such a delight. I'm so glad you did well at Adepticon. Like, and I look forward to seeing you again next year. With more... With more merchandise. With more merchandise, right? You're gonna have to just. Apparently, you did not up the, have enough. Up the ante. <laughs> uh, JP got rockets. I'm running a paint and take next weekend. Um, let's see. Andrew, for disembodied voice, allergies have been beating the crud out of me all week. Oh yeah. God! Spring is in the air. Hi, pigs, I, fried chicken. I die of allergies. I like it. You go to the doctor and they're like, "Are you allergic to everything?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm allergic to the air, apparently. <laughs> like, I'm just allergic to everything." Hey, when I was in high school, I had a friend of mine, uh, a girl who was allergic to water. Like, I don't know how that's possible. It wasn't quite the water, but it was like if it had any type of chlorine at all in it, she couldn't swim in pools and stuff like that. It was crazy. All right. Just sounds sad. And so we get back from Adepticon and we hang out. My friend Aaron's over and I'm still working, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> and then my birthday rolls around and we spend the day at home because we're sick. Uh, but Paul's package came in. He sent me some lovely birthday stuff. So I did want to share that before we close out this evening's live stream. So it started off with a lovely uh, card. We always get these, um, or he always has these like cool postcards from like GW. So happy birthday. Thank you, sir. That was really bright. And then um, one of the most important things that keeps me going on a day to day basis. Uh, some proper twinning, some British version of the Twinnings Royal Grey Box. They're yellow or gold here. And this is uh yeah the purple's kind of weird yeah it's see. an interesting take so i'm like i'm gonna have to do a blind test i need to see <laughs> if the tea if their earl gray british version tastes is the same. discernibly different uh-huh i need to see i need to know and then he sent me some sweet sweet minis uh <laughs> but first how about an entire package of space marine heads which i know is like super hard to see there but, uh, but there are the beakies. Or there's beakies, there's other things, there's Chainsaw Man, because <laughs> there's a running joke with that. So <laughs> is the most ridiculous like a whole unit of Chainsaw Man Reens? Just one every, in every no, unit. No, just a whole unit. A whole chainsaw unit of Chainsaw Man Reens. Man Reens? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, 
So these are super cool. And they will probably find use when I eventually make my little Tome Keeper army. And then he painted this super sweet slash not Strachan slash not Sly Marbo uh, Katachan Feller. Is that gonna focus? It's not gonna focus, it wants to focus on that. Take that, bastard. Here we go. This is, this is gonna be a fight, isn't it? Just gotta get a hand behind it or something. Yeah, I think so. It's hard. Is that focusing now? So now I can't see. No. It's not. Okay, cool. So, he's really cool. If you could see, here I'll let you zoom him in there, Flo. And then I will force focus it. Uh, actually, that looks fine the way you're doing it. So, he's super neat. Um, so thank you for that. And of course, Paul painted it all for me, so, because he knows I'm lazy and won't paint my own stuff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, because I guess if you... By the way, Mandragora is asking if you have a P.O. box that they can send things to. Uh, I do. Does. I do have a P.O. box. I don't remember what it is off hand. <laughs> so, well, are we going to add it? Can there? you add it to YouTube? Yes. I uh, could add it to the YouTube description. That's true. That's I could good. do that. Maybe we could do that tonight. Okay. Yes, I will add our peer box. That's something I've kind of been meaning to do and then never got around to because I'm... But here. we have had the peer box We have had it for, for years. literally years. <laughs> uh, and so if you play Lethal Company, this guy might be familiar to you. Paul painted him up for me as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an already dead version of him, but... <laughs> You know, it's still wonderfully done. And Lethal Company is just one of those fun games. I heard the other day that I guess there's this streaming um, trend where people are just going through one game a month, which sounds exhausting to me. Uh, so I'm like, no, Lethal Company's fine. I'll just, I'll just play that or go back to Left 4 Dead 2 or Dark Tide or whatever. And then he sent me these. Okay. Uh, so from Rogue Hobbies, there's these really pretty dice, actually. Um, if I can get them there. There we go. So you can sort of see that. There's sort of like a certain translucency to them. Uh, and I rolled them, and they weren't terrible, so maybe I'll try them. I don't know, Well, man. it seems Just like the Cadian dice that we got you weren't bad, or the Cadian dice we got That's you true. weren't bad either. I've got a bunch of dice. Well, actually, wait a minute. Roll. When you set them down, there's two ones, uh -huh. a two, two threes, a five, two sixes. Is that exactly even? Maybe. I did flip the sixes <laughs> manually. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. So there's that. So <laughs> thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate the birthday present. And I have some goodies from Adepticon that I'll be sending back his way here. Mm. So, yeah. Kind of like Sly Marbo, Strack and Mix, right? Yeah, exactly. All right. So I think on that note, we can... Go ahead and call it a night. Slightly over, but I know we started late, and I did want to try and cover as much of what happened at Adepticon as we can. Is it worth going to? I think probably, as far as conventions I mean, go, if, it's if great. you like wargaming, if you like wargaming, you probably should. You probably go enjoy Adepticon. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and then our next live stream will be in two weeks. I'll actually be back on schedule, so that's going to be the 17th of April, and hopefully I'll have. Uh, the, the goal is to have a War Machine Battle Report out by then for your viewing pleasure because I'm excited to get it out. Super fun. Oh, there's my, there's my whole yeah. tank process. <clears throat> Flo's been doing a little base painting there. She's work, working on my chimera because transports are important. Because <laughs> they're making chimeras. <laughs> it's just the only way I can hear chimera. But, uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys in two weeks and chat about some more fun stuff. Um, but keep an eye on the Facebook or the Instagram. I was posting on Instagram pretty good until I got sick. Uh, so I'll go back to that um, and share some more of the stuff that happens at Adepticon. And in the meantime, you take care of yourselves. Enjoy your hobbying. Happy gaming. Happy spring. We'll see you later. Bye. Oh, yeah. And, of course, I'm going to do the outro. So we can chat.
copy that. No more sandwiches, Barry. with this place. I'm in the west corridor. I'm right outside the generator room. I'm out of bullets. <laughs> 